Hello, I'm uh, Bruce Johnson from the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. And in the plenary talk, I'm going over some evolving challenges in drug development. This is being based on the ongoing efforts to comprehensively genotype the lung cancers and be able to treat them with effective targeted treatments. Uh, this was ushered in in 2004 when three different groups um, in the United States ended up finding out the link between sensitizing mutations of the epidermal growth factor receptor and response to the EGFR TKIs. And this ushered in the development of precision medicine and lung cancer. Now, it took a quite a while before this was introduced. Uh, and the sort of landmark paper in 2009 by Dr. Tony Monk from Hong Kong uh, showed that people who had these EGFR mutations uh, had longer progression-free survivals when they received gefitinib than if they got chemotherapy. And this answered a question that a lot of us have been wondering about is, you know, does this really beat chemotherapy and is this better treatment? So that publication in 2009 began transforming our field. Now, here in the United States, it took quite a while uh, before we ended up uh, getting the drugs approved for these mutations. It didn't take, it took until 2015 and 16 until uh, EGFR mutations <clears throat> could be treated with gefitinib or lotinib. And then the second drug approval uh, for the ALCRI arrangements uh, took place in 2011 with crizotinib. So those were the two different, uh, the two different important biomarkers that define treatment for our patients. And then not too much happened for about another five years. Uh, there was ongoing development of the different EGFR inhibitors. But in the last five years, we've seen a rather dramatic uh, expansion of the numbers of genomic changes for which we have approved therapies. And you know, in my talk, I go through this. And, and one of the things that ended up happening is that for uh, ROS1 rearrangements, uh, we ended up having crizotinib uh, approved in 2016, followed by entrectinib in 2019. Then for BRAF V600Es uh, mutations, uh, we ended up getting the uh, dibrafenib trametinib combination approved in 2017. And then uh, one of the first patent cancer approved uh, approvals was with uh, laratrectinib for NTRAC rearrangements. And we ended up having that drug approved in 2017. On the basis of relatively few, this information was updated in 2020 to show that uh, about seven, I'm sorry, nine of 12 lung cancers with NTRAC rearrangements had responses. And so it led to the, its approval. And a second drug was approved for these NTRAC rearrangements in 2019, and uh, was approved. And uh, once again, there were 10 lung cancers amongst the approval from a number of different uh, tumors that were tested. The next one that uh, ended up being approved is selpercatinib uh, for RET rearranged uh, tumors with uh, response rates of 67 uh, 67 of uh, 105 or 64%. And then um, pralcetinib was approved in 2020. And then the most recent genomic change for which there's approval was capmatinib for met exon 14 skip mutations that were approved in 2020.